This is the inside of a Yaskawa CIMR MT3 7.5K spindle drive. So this is a 7.5 kilowatt spindle drive. It's from a Morisiki SL20 CNC lathe. And the problem that we were having is on spindle deceleration we would get an over voltage alarm and basically that means that the the braking resistor circuit isn't working correctly and the DC bus voltage was going over the set limit so uh, basically I don't know if you'll be able to read this but this is the schematic uh, layout for this drive and so basically uh, three phase power comes in goes through a rectifier here goes uh, into this set of uh, contacts here that's the DC bus and then there's two IGBT diode or uh, transistors that basically fire to do the braking so these are the braking resistors here shown by these little boxes and then this right here is a big capacitor and then there's some uh, other circuitry involved with that and then it comes down here to a set of of uh, transistors that take the, the DC bus and turn it back into three phase power to run the motor so what uh, yeah with that with the problem on the braking circuit we can pretty well narrow it down to these these uh, IGBTs here that are controlling the braking so yeah this is the main input on this uh, 50 amp breaker it goes through a reactor to clean it up and then into these three uh, thyristors and that's basically a uh, rectifier Oop, that one's loose Got poor quality control here in the repair department Anyway, uh, yeah, so this is the rectification. These two bars here are the DC bus, and then they come into these two uh, Mitsubishi IGBT modules. And uh, basically, when the drive is, is motoring or you know running normally, it, the power goes through these two diodes. Those are built into those IGBT modules, and then when the braking is applied, these big IGBT transistors switch and uh, basically throw the brake on. So the the manual is a little bit deceiving. It says that it has regenerative braking, but that's not the case. Uh, it has big big uh, braking resistors built right into this chassis. They're on the back side underneath. Uh, where the heat sink is and uh, the, if it was a regenerative drive there'd be a, a lot more going on up here in this uh, rectifier portion because it basically needs uh, another set of, of transistors like what you have down here on the output side in order to recreate the three phase power to send it back into the into the uh, transmission line so it's not really regenerative I'm not sure if that's a translation issue or what. Anyway, uh, I took these two IGBT modules out and bench tested them and I applied a uh, 5 volt DC uh, circuit to the to the emitter and the gate and I was able to uh, test the switching on the on the uh, IGBTs and they both switch correctly so when the voltage is applied to the gate, current is allowed to flow from the collector to the emitter. So that part of them is working correctly. Also they have a built-in flyback diode and the flyback diode on both of them is working correctly. The only thing I found wrong is on this one here, the large diode, um, basically this one in the schematic, is faulty. It's basically shorted all the time. So 
I'm not exactly sure how the circuit works, um, but I believe that you know that's going to cause a problem. The other thing that I found, this board here sits on top of the of the IGBTs, and it's full of passive components. So there's a, a bunch of resistors, a pair for each phase, a bunch of capacitors, a pair for each phase, and you know more capacitors. And then it's got three diodes. And this one here has tested faulty in circuit. So I'm going to desolder it and uh, probably go ahead and replace it. I went ahead, I ordered a new one anyway. And uh, we'll see what happens there. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of this board is, but I believe it's some kind of a precharge circuit uh, to precharge the big capacitor that's in here so that when you turn the drive on you don't get a big you know suck of amperage in to charge that capacitor it's kind of like a trickle charger for the capacitor uh, maybe I'm totally wrong about that but I think that's what it is so anyway um, the drive still works in the forward or the motoring you know running normally it works fine it doesn't give us an alarm until it's in the braking side so I think that these rectifier modules are, are okay, these, these thyristors. And also that leads me to believe that these, the uh, output side transistors are okay as well. Now it's possible that there's something wrong with these on the braking uh, function where they're not turning the generated three-phase power from the motor back into DC to go back into the bus. I don't know. But I did find that one diode that's bad. So replace that IGBT module and we're going to put it back together and test it. Okay, here's the board <clears throat> reinstalled above those IGBTs. This is the diode here that I thought was bad. I went ahead and unsoldered it and it actually tests fine outside of the circuit. So yeah, that was a waste of time there. I guess that one can't be tested in circuit. So yeah, this board seems to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and put the thing back together, put it back in the machine and uh, see what happens. Okay, time to start her up, see what happens. That's a good sign. Okay, usually zero means we're ready to go. I'm gonna home the machine out and give it a shot. Okay, we're currently running forward. Looks like it says 1800 RPM. So we'll see what happens on D-cell. Yeah, that's it. I think we're back in business. Awesome. All right, so this is the culprit that I replaced. You know, this is what was causing all the problems in that Yaskawa spindle drive. So this is a Mitsubishi QM75E2Y-HD. And this is the data sheet for it. So it's basically just a Darlington transistor. So it's a small transistor that turns on a large transistor. And there's a 2Y and a 3Y, and it's the same housing, 
but the only difference is the the direction basically of the diode so there's a a, a collector and an emitter just like a normal transistor and then there's an additional terminal that is a, a fixed diode and there's also a flyback diode that goes between the collector and the emitter uh, like you'd find in any other IGBT so when I was testing this thing to see what was going on all I did was I, I applied um, 5 volts DC from the emitter to the gate uh, which is this terminal or this terminal and the gate is this other small terminal and that basically turns on the IGBT module and I just used a, a load in this case a, a regular light bulb with a 12 volt power supply and uh, connected it across the collector and the emitter and when I fired the gate the light turns on so that means that the switching side of this IGBT is fine what's wrong with this IGBT is that diode so to test that I have my little little fluke multimeter here and it has a diode test setting and uh, it's real simple all you need to do is check from one side of the diode to the other and what you should have is either a 0L meaning no conductivity or you should get a little chirp in about 0.3 to 0.6 volts in this case the thing chimes the whole time and it shows 0 volts DC so that indicates that this thing is shorted and you get the same thing when you reverse the polarity now watch what happens when I check the flyback diode 0 L and then I get the little chirp that's what you should have when you test a good transistor so little chirp 0.4 volts perfectly fine the other way 0 L but this one no bueno so anyway this little guy right here that was the cause of the uh, of the trouble I bought a brand new IGPT module off eBay for forty dollars you can buy them from a, a supplier you know any electrical supply house can sell you this for I don't know fifty to sixty dollars new with a warranty and uh, I have a receipt from this Yaskawa drive it was replaced with a brand new drive in 2007 so that would be nine ten years ago replaced by Yaskawa and the replacement cost with labor was sixty seven hundred dollars so yeah I can put a lot of fifty dollar modules into that spindle drive for uh, sixty seven hundred dollars so you know, I'm not an expert about spindle drives or VFDs, but there's really not that much to them. Especially these large industrial uh, spindle drives. You know, they're just made from little little components that they bolt together. The real magic is in the computer control side, and uh, that pa that part of the con of the uh, drive is pretty robust. What takes a beating is these big switching transistors. You know, that's where all the amperage is. So yeah, this little IGBT module is rated to switch 75 amps. So that's a hell of a lot of current to put through this little this little guy. And uh, we were running a uh, we were running some parts that have a real quick cycle. All it does is ramp up the spindle to 3,000 RPM, face, do one outside turn, do a tool change, do a chamfer, and then back down to zero. And you know we've run thousands and thousands of parts like that and I guess finally it just fatigued that little diode and she let the magic smoke out and that was it but luckily it didn't destroy anything else it just uh, it just wouldn't work on the braking side so that's a successful conclusion and I'm very happy with the repair